Happy Monday, and welcome to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Today, we're talking about circumstantial evidence. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. In a sexual assault trial, an issue that came up in a dispute between the complainant and the accused was whether the complainant had the capacity to consent. She had been at a bar, she got into the accused vehicle, and there was some intercourse that took place. And the trial judge inferred from the fact that she'd been drinking that she lacked the capacity to consent, even though there was no evidence specifically on this point. And that conviction that the trial judge rendered was overturned on the basis of the fact that that circumstantial evidence of intoxication without the expert evidence to explain the capacity question or evidence from the complainant about the capacity question was not answered properly in relation to the law of circumstantial evidence. In Canada, the law of circumstantial evidence is that if the circumstantial evidence is consistent with other reasonable inferences that arise from it that are inconsistent with guilt, then it cannot prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. This is what happened in that case. And this case raises obviously very important issues, because when it comes to the defense of mistaken belief in consent and the issue of a person's capacity to consent, that's a very fact-specific inquiry. But at the same time, there are also common sense inferences that can be drawn from the fact that somebody is consuming alcohol. And at the risk of making trials, especially sexual assault trials, incredibly prolix and incredibly time consuming, the need to have expert evidence and the need to have specific evidence on a person's capacity in every single case becomes complicated by decisions like this that seem to suggest that if intoxication is present, there does need to be an additional layer of evidence to get above that circumstantial evidence threshold. It's unfortunate that the Supreme Court of Canada didn't revisit this question of circumstantial evidence as it relates to the law of sexual assault to make it not only easier to proceed with sexual assault trials, which are already incredibly complex and incredibly time consuming, but also to make it clearer so that Crown Counsel knows what type of evidence needs to be led, so that complainants know what types of information they may need to present or they may need to obtain from medical professionals, and so that accused people know what type of evidence needs to be led against them in a circumstance where there is an allegation that intoxication impacted somebody's ability to consent. Unfortunately, it's going to be another case before we see the Supreme Court of Canada delve into the way in which circumstantial evidence specifically affects this issue in relation to capacity for consent. Cases that should have gone to the Supreme Court of Canada, but didn't. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cases That Should Have Gone to the Supreme Court of Canada But Didn't. I'm Kyla Lee at Acumen Law Corporation. Thank you to Brazen Bull Creative for putting together these videos. Please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.